Hello and welcome. My name is Aaron Russo and I'm an analyst here at Duffin Phelps. I'm part of the team that created the Cost of Capital Navigator. The Cost of Capital Navigator is an online platform that guides the analysts through the process of estimating the cost of capital, a key component of any valuation analysis. The objective of this video is to demonstrate to users of the Cost of Capital Navigator how to use the build-up method to estimate cost of equity capital for a small subject company using data from the CRISP decile size study. After logging in, I get to the dashboard of the Cost of Capital Navigator where I can start a new estimate. This is how I will access the data I need to estimate cost of equity for my subject company. So I'll go ahead and start a new estimate by clicking the blue button here. The first thing I need to do is name my estimate. The name of our subject company is Waltz Electronics. Now I can click Save and Continue. After naming my estimate, I get to Step 1 General Inputs. The first thing I need is my valuation date. For this example, we'll use March 31st, 2016. The next two items are the home country and the investee country. I'll go ahead and leave these at the United States since I only want to use US data. The next thing I need is my subject company's industry. This is an electronics company, so I could search for an industry by typing in electronic, or if I know the SIC code I want to use, I could go ahead and type that in. For this example, let's use SIC 36, Electronic and Other Electrical Equipment. Now I can click Save and Continue. Next, I get to Step 2, Cost of Capital Equations. This is where I can access all the data I need to estimate cost of equity. In this example, we're going to use the build-up method within the crisp decile size study to estimate cost of equity, so I can click into the build-up section. My build-up equation in the crisp decile size study is the cost of equity equals a risk-free rate plus an equity risk premium, plus an industry risk premium, plus a size premium. The way I modify the equation is I hover over the variable I want to edit, then I click the edit button. Let's start with the risk-free rate. So I'll hover over the risk-free rate and click edit. Here I could type in a custom risk-free rate of say 3%, or I could select from the drop-down one of the off-the-shelf items the Navigator has for me. In this example, let's use the spot 20-year treasury yield of 2.2%. Now I can click Save. The next thing I need is an equity risk premium, so I can hover over and click Edit. Here I could type in a custom equity risk premium of say 5%, or I could select one of the options from the drop-down. Since I'm using the spot 20-year treasury yield for my risk-free rate, I could select the historical long-term 1926 to present ERP, or the supply side long-term ERP. If I wanted to use the Duffin Phelps recommended ERP, I would have to change my risk-free rate to the Duffin Phelps normalized risk-free rate. Let's go ahead and use the historical long-term ERP of 6.9%. Now I can click Save. The next thing I need is an industry risk premium. The navigator is going to ask me for an industry beta. Remember that an industry risk premium is calculated as an industry beta times the ERP that I've selected, in this case the historical ERP of 6.9%, minus the ERP that I've selected. I could type in a custom beta or select one of the betas from the drop-down. I could select the SIC 36 full information beta of 1.1 or the SIC 36 median Vazicek adjusted beta of 1.24. Let's go ahead and use the SIC 36 full information beta. Once I select the beta, the navigator will automatically calculate the industry risk premium based off of the beta and the ERP that I'm using. In this case, it comes out to 0.69%. The last thing we need to complete our buildup equation is a size premium. Remember that the crisp decile size study calculates size premium for 10 deciles ranked by market cap, with decile 1 comprising the largest companies and decile 10 comprising the smallest companies. The navigator is going to ask me for a market cap. Let's say we estimate our subject company's market cap to be around 5 million. So I type in 5 for 5 million and the navigator will automatically map me to the appropriate crisp decile and crisp decile size grouping. A market cap of 5 million places us in decile 10, which comprises companies ranging in market cap from 1.9 million to 209 million. We also fall in the micro cap size grouping, which is a broader measure that combines both deciles 9 and 10. 
And since I fell in decile 10, I could choose one of the decile 10 split options. In this case, I could choose decile 10B, which is the bottom half of decile 10, and decile 10Z, which is the bottom half of 10B. In this example, let's go ahead and use the decile 10 size premium of 5.6%. So I'll click on that and then click save. We've now calculated cost of equity for Waltz Electronics using the crisp decile size study buildup method, which in this case came out to 15.39%. Notice that all of my input selections are labeled underneath the values. For example, I use the spot 20 year treasury yield for my risk free rate and the historical long term ERP. In my initial cost of equity estimate, I used the decile 10 size premium of 5.6%. What if we wanted to see what our cost of equity would look like using decile 10B or 10Z, which were also available to us to select? What I can do is click the duplicate button here, which will generate a duplicate equation. And now in this second equation, I can change my size premium selection. So let's go ahead and use decile 10B in this equation. So I hover over the size premium and click edit. And now I can select decile 10B for my size premium. And then I can click save. Now I could do the same thing to see what my cost of equity would look like using decile 10Z size premium. So I'll duplicate the equation again, hover over the size premium, click edit, and now I can select decile 10Z. Since I used three different equations and differed the size premium selection in each, I can rename each of these scenarios to better keep track of what I did. So I'll rename the first equation decile 10. Then I can rename the second scenario decile 10B. Then I'll rename the third decile 10Z. Now I could continue on to use other methods and data sources to estimate cost of equity capital, or I could click finish now to view my results and export them to PDF and to Excel. We have now finished our case study of using the crisp decile size study buildup method to estimate cost of equity capital for a small subject company.